Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. All right, tonight I want to talk to you about humility. So I put on a, a shirt that I felt would be appropriate for the subject of humility, which for those who are listening online says Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. So, um, it, it, it's more the, the practical than the technical aspect of, of this, of, of, of humility, that I am interested in today. But I need to talk to you first for a few minutes about what it is and what it isn't. Okay, There's a verse in the Bible, half a verse, we'll use it just for tonight, which is in 1 Peter chapter 5. And it's half of verse 5, and it says this, And be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So, there is evidently a dynamic here that the writer, Peter, is trying to convey that has a profound impact on what we receive in life. It suggests that only the humble can truly understand what grace is. See, you can read this one way, which if you have a God who rewards for good and punishes for bad, then you read this one way, which is that here's God resists the proud, punishing for bad, and he gives grace to the humble, rewards for good. But how about that the, the, the true benefits of humility cannot touch the proud because the true benefits of humility are an understanding of grace. So God gives that grace not to the proud because they can't do anything with it. He gives it to the humble. Okay? But it's not just that God gives grace to the humble because they need grace. He gives the gift of grace to the humble because he knows that they'll use it in the way that he intended for it to be used. So when you realize that humility and humiliation are twins from the same mother, do you get that? Humility and humiliation are from exactly the same root word. They are twins of the same mother. You'll understand why grace is best understood by the humble. Because in their humiliation, they recognize their own need for grace and therefore grace is given to the humble because they've understood in their humiliation something about the grace of God. So let me say a couple of things about humili hum humility. Just give me that water. Okay? So, humility is a kind of voluntary humiliation. Do you hear that? Humility is a kind of voluntary humiliation. Now, of the softest kind, it's not the kind that takes a whip and beats you until you bleed or walks up steps on your knees, but humility is a kind of voluntary humiliation because you are prepared not to be at the head, not to be the first, not to be the loudest, not to have the best opinion. It's like a kind of voluntary humiliation. Humility is taking the lowest appropriate position in any given situation. Humility is the condition that outlives the fact that I am not, I cannot, and I will never be sufficient in myself alone. Which is difficult in today's culture, which is built on self-sufficiency. Humility is not thinking less of myself, but thinking of myself less. Did you catch that? C.S. Lewis said that. I have to admit, I stole that from C.S. Lewis. Humility is not thinking less of myself. That's a false understanding. Humility is thinking of myself less. 
Now, humility should not be confused with ass-kissing for advancement, and I apologize for the language, but it's the language most of you will understand, and I've watched that happen, people doing that for advancement, seeming to be very humble, nor is it self-deprecation for acceptance. Oh, well, I'm just really no good, you know, and I'm just here, and, and really, I'm, you know, there's nothing about me, kind of, I'm just, you know, kind of, I'm just so humble, I can hard live with myself kind of attitude. Humility, humility is not those things. I was in Florence, Kentucky some years ago, which is, which is um, just across the, the Ohio River from Cincinnati. And uh, I was the main speaker at a weekend conference. And um, we were having the pre-meal for the conference and lots of people were invited. And there was a couple there who um, were, shall we just say, extremely rude to me. It's kind of, I introduced myself and it was like, oh, well, yeah, you know, moving on. Oh, Pastor Cleddy, Pastor, no, Pastor, all these different pastors were there. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. Um, and then uh, Cleddy said, oh, have you met Anth yet? He's the main speaker at our conference. Well, I couldn't shake this couple off then. Oh, well, well you know, what's your, ch- where do you, and what do you, that sickened me. It sickened me because often that is what happens in our lives, that there is this falseness that is, we, we, we put on this face of humility to try and impress when it's not actually humility at all. It's all for the purpose of advancement. Don't do it. That is almost as bad as wearing socks with sandals. Don't (laughs) do it. I said almost as bad because wearing socks with sandals is much worse. (laughs) Wearing socks with sandals and shorts, even worse. And trousers are meant to be an appropriate length. Trousers are not meant to be this length, okay? Okay. So, there's a little fashion sense for you, so, a little righteous teaching. (laughs) Now, another thing to help you with humility. Be careful not to mistake insecurity and inadequacy or a quiet personality for humility. Humility is not displayed by insecurity and inadequacy any more than greatness is displayed by arrogance. You would not say that somebody has greatness because they have arrogance. Well, don't say somebody has humility just because you see that they're insecure and inadequate or quiet-natured. That is not what measures humility. Now, this is staggering. Humility taught Jesus the human condition. I want that to sink in. Humility taught Jesus the human condition. Without humility, Jesus would not have understood the human condition. Because you can't be given by God what humility provides. You only get it one way, through being humble, through humility. Humility gave Jesus something that he could not have had in its absence. Let me prove it to you. Philippians chapter 2 in the New Testament says this, verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, and didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Now, because of that, God exalted him, and all the benefits of that were manifested in in the elevation. Remember, the elevation, okay? If you humble yourself, God says, in due season, I'll lift you up. It's a process of elevation. Humility is the process of elevation. You've got to go down to come up. But what I want you to understand here is that humility taught Jesus the human condition because he humbled himself 
to become human flesh and to subject himself to every aspect of that human flesh, including emerging from the legs of a girl into our world, because of that, he was able, as Hebrews teaches us, to be able to sympathize with our infirmity and to help us because he has been through what we have been through. But if Jesus hadn't have been humble, if he hadn't have submitted to humility, the experiences that were necessary for him to be who he was supposed to have come could have never happened because God can't give you divinely what humility provides for you. It comes through the humility. He gives grace to the humble. Jesus became the vehicle of grace because of his humility, being willing to be humiliated in his human flesh, even though that humiliation went to an extent that was undeserved, in that humiliation, in that humility, it says God exalted him and gave him a name above every name. All of us want our name to be great. All of us want to get to a higher place. But I propose to you that the real way in life, which the wisdom of Scripture tells us, is that when you humble yourself, that's how you get ahead. Now, these are the technicalities. We're going to talk about the practicalities in just a moment to give you some example. So I need a couple of people to help me. So I'd like James, if you can help me. And I don't know where Connie went. She said she wanted to. No, it's all right. Don't worry. Uh, I need someone else to help me. So I need a volunteer. Are you volunteering, Chloe? Okay. Come on, James and Chloe. Okay, so I want to do this with, with an illustration. So we've got some props here. Okay, James, that's yours. That's your prop because that's heavy and you, you pump weights. So didn't want to pick any of these wimpy guys out here who are like, oh, it's really heavy. You need that club. Don't drink it, okay? That's your prop. Okay, so... Here's James, and James has something to offer. I, I want what James has, and so I want you to take the top off there, James. Because I need something, and he has something that I need, and I want what he has, so I want you to pour that in there. <laughs> Come on, what you, James... <laughs> Now, can you see what's happening? Whenever I try and keep pace with him and be as big as him and reach where he is reaching and do what he's doing, he can't give me what he's got. Even though what he's got is good, he can't give it to me because, because I'm not going to show any weakness. Okay? I'm not going to give in. I'm going to show him, I, I, I can match you for everything. So he can't do it. But you see, if we change our attitude here, and now I get below James, and I get lower, see? What he can do, he can pour into me. Thank you. He can pour, but he can only pour into me because I got lower. Now, false humility is when I give the appearance of being small and lowly while ensuring that I never put myself in the position where I can be poured into. I've sat in counseling rooms, I've been in conversations where there has been this appearance of being small and lowly, but when you try and speak into that life, they're always, always trying to, well, it, that's not really the problem and you don't really understand and really I'm not the issue. And all the time it, it, it's the doing this. So I can't pour anything in because you won't lower yourself in humility to receive what it is that you could get. To, anything to be poured into has to be willing to go lower than the one that is pouring in, see? So, so, so what happens is I trump all attempts at in-pouring, and, and usually humanity, here's how it happens. Well, I was afraid. 
That's the most common one. I didn't come to see you because I was afraid. Okay. Now, that's Christians that say that. Okay. I want to read you a verse from the Bible. Genesis 3, verse 10. Spoken by a man called Adam who needed an inpouring because he'd just messed up in a place called the Garden of Eden. And, and there was one who wanted to pour into him, but you see, he wouldn't let him because he says, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Or in other words, I, I'm not going to get myself in the place where you can pour into me what it is that I need because I somehow need to justify my Self, I, I, I somehow need to be seen as, as okay. I, I don't want to be seen as weak. I don't want to be seen as needy. So, so, so I'm going to try and match you. That's why we never receive. That's why the grace that we long for often doesn't touch our life. Because we won't humble ourselves. We won't come lower and say, you have something, and I need that something pouring into me. But for that to happen, I have to come under you. I have to come beneath you. You've got to get under in order to receive. Now, here we have Chloe. And I have something. I, I, I received it from James. When, when in humility I was willing to get lower than him and allow him to give me what he has so it would pour into me. I have something, and I'd like to give it to Chloe, but we have a little problem here with Chloe. What's the problem with Chloe? What's? The problem is the glass is already full, so I want you to disappear and get rid of that, Chloe. Not on people, not... Go on, disappear and get rid of it. Go somewhere. Don't take too long. I want Chloe to, because this is very important. The issue of emptying ourselves so that we can receive and taking whatever steps are necessary, going to whatever lengths we need to go, doing whatever we need to do in order to empty ourselves so that then we can receive. So that every time we're empty, we can receive. The problem is very often, first of all, we don't want to humble ourselves under anything to admit that we have a need that cannot be met by ourselves, that someone else must meet, therefore we have to acknowledge and come under, but then the other problem we have is that we get full up with stuff and then we don't empty ourselves often enough. We don't pour that out. We don't bring ourselves like empty vessels. So then the problem is we reach a place of sterility because we can now no longer receive because we're always full of something. Yeah, we think we know it all. We think we've got it all down. We think we believe automatically all the right things. We've got everything sussed. Or in other things, we think, I don't want my life disturbing. I don't want anything to change. I'm going to stay as I am. But you see, the secret to this process is humility and emptiness. Humility and and emptiness. What did it say about Jesus? He emptied himself. He was equal with God, but he emptied himself. Why? Because you can't be filled with something else if you stay full of what it is you've already got. And Jesus couldn't be what he was to us unless he emptied himself of what he was. But in the willingness to empty himself of what he was and humble himself, he became filled with something else. So now he becomes the God-man. Now he becomes the meter of people's needs who can now pour out to others. And the issue is, for as long as he will do that and I will do this and she will empty that, this process keeps going. It's the process of the kingdom of God. So here's the deal. Sometimes... Get under is better advice than get over it. Sometimes you need to get under it, not get over it. And all the time we are striving in our pride and our unwillingness to be humble to get over it. Well, I'll just get over it. You've just got to stiff up a lip and I'll do my best and I'm just going to press through and I'll get over it when actually the secret is to get under it. You say, yeah, but... but it's difficult. Jesus got under it at the cross, not over it. He got under it. 
He, he humbled himself even to death. He got under the pressure, under the difficulty, under the trial, under the pain, because he realized if I get under this, what happens is that I am in my humility receiving what is being poured into this. And what was being poured into this was the life of God. So he dies, but on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Why? Because life was being poured into him in his death. But without his death, life couldn't be poured into him. Without him coming under, he couldn't get over. So I'm changing advice to you today. My advice to you is not get over it. My advice is get under it. What's happening in your life right now? Get under it in humility. Acknowledge, I cannot deal with this myself. I am incapable. I do not have the wisdom. I do not have the understanding. And I do not have the presence within me enough to deal with this. So I am getting under it so that this will reveal that so that into me can be poured resurrection life in my humility to the death that's going on. In fact, the truth is you may never get over it until or unless you get under it. And that's some of the problem that's going on here. You can't get over it because you won't get under it. You won't humble yourself under what is happening. Realize that what is that is showing in your life is the need that God already set himself to fill and wants to pour into you if you will just come into that. So this is life-changing. The opposite is not protecting you, it's harming you. The things we do to protect our reputation, to protect the secret things in our life, we won't talk, we won't expose, we won't reveal, because we don't want to look weak, or we say, oh well, it's nobody else's business, so we keep those things all locked in. And what happens in that is that's not protecting you, it's harming you. But when in humility we say, I have a need, and I can't meet that need, and God in our world has, through Jesus, declared that the Word would become flesh. That means that what He has said will become reality in my life. And if I can humble myself under that, whether it's for prayer, whether it's for counsel, whatever it is, if I can come under the struggles that I have and in humility say, this is crushing me, this is beating me, and not run away, because Jesus didn't run away, but face that and say, but in all of this, there is life. Because he raises up, he lifts up the humble. The Bible says he exalts the humble. He gives life to the dead because I've become willing to receive what can be poured into me and I've emptied myself enough to make it a reality in my life. All right, so, thank you. Do something I haven't done for a while. Might be some of you in here tonight that say, I, I, I just, I need to admit that I need a help from outside of myself and, and I need to put myself under, humbly, under that flow, the provision that is there so that I can receive it into my life so that I'm not talking it away, excusing it away, trying to live up to this thing and somehow never making it, but, but I need to put myself under this so that I can be poured into and that in my emptiness, I can receive something today that actually gives me the strength to be an overcomer. It gives me a strength to come through. It gives me a strength to break things that have been on me and on my family and on my life for generations, but, but things that can be broken because I'm coming in honesty to receive from the one who promised to give us life, the one who said, I am the water of life ready to pour in. So here's, here's, here's what we're going to do just, just for the last few minutes. Um, if that's you, I'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do something tonight. I want you to leave your seat, come and stand here at the front. I want to speak a blessing over you. It's the act that says I'm humbling myself because I need something outside of myself that I do not have, but I'm coming to put myself under the flow that comes out of God's heart for me today that that flow will come into me and give me the life that I need. 
Thanks, Jamie. Just come stand right here, son. If you want to join Jamie, you just come down. We're going to pray for you. Do you just go and play something, Danny? There's something very releasing to the human spirit that when it in, in all its honesty accepts, I have a need, and I cannot meet that need, I do not within me have the solution to that need. There's something very releasing in the human spirit that does that. And I want to say this before I pray for you. Um, life is a very deceptive thing. I, I watched a very interesting program um, uh, I think it was last night or the night before on TV where they were talking about the five senses, uh, touch, smell, hearing, taste, and sight. And uh, showing how, how easy it is for us to deceive ourselves. So here's what they did. You won't believe this. You have to watch it. This is absolutely true as I stand here. They said to these people, we're going we're gonna to put a bowl of fruit in front of you and we're going to give you a piece of fruit. We want to tell you which fruit it is. Think simple. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a blindfold on you. We're going to put headphones on you and uh, we're going we're gonna to put a, a, a peg on your nose to stop you smelling. Okay, so all you'll have is feel and taste. So they did this with three different people. They put in their hand an onion that had had the flaky bits taken off so it felt smooth like an apple and said, now take a bite, tell me which fruit. All of them in the test who bit into the, bit into the onion said, it's an apple. I was, I was staggered. I thought, I'm off to bed, I can't handle this. I'm, <laughs> this is all, this is too much. And there was, there was showing how actually all our senses work together to, to give us our concepts and, and how easily we can deceive ourselves and become deceived into thinking something is something that it's not. Now, that can be scary for somebody like me who, who preaches what I believe is the truth of the gospel because people could say, well, you know, it's not true and you make people think it's true. But that's why I believe that in... In our journey of faith with God, all five senses should come into play. Because it was only when the, all the senses weren't used that we got a problem. That's why the Bible says with your whole heart, with your whole being, with your own soul. Because when everything is engaged, you come to a place of reality. And this is a place of reality. There is a real God with a real grace who sent a real son who became really flesh, who humbled himself and was really exalted so that as you humble yourself, he can pour into you in the same way that he was poured into. And that what Jesus learned about life through humility, that he could not learn any other way, we learn the same way. We humble ourselves under the hand of God. That scripture goes on to say, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. And in due season, he will lift you up. So as we humble ourselves today, I'm going to pray God will just put something in your spirit, something in your heart, something in your soul that is the source of an answer that could be found nowhere else as we humble ourselves. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Jamie. Just break every hole that the pastor's had, every, every pain in his heart, in the issue of his story, rewrite Jamie's story, Father, in Jesus' name. This lovely, wonderful young man who's such a hero, in Jesus' name. And for Chris as well, Father, on our new journeys. Father, in Jesus' name right now, we, we humble ourselves under you because you said in due season, you're lifting us up. Life from the dead, resurrection. And for Debbie, as we just bow ourselves in your presence, Father, for, for, for things that we have found difficult to get a hold of. And things that have seemed so difficult to grasp. But thank you, Lord, that as we humble ourselves, you, 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 you give us what we could never have. You put grace in us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. For every challenge, 
that's hit this family, everything that's tried to disrupt, all the backstory that somehow seems to keep affecting the front story. Lord, as we come and admit it before you, we thank you we have a help and a hope that's not determined by what has been, but is determining what will be by your grace. And we receive that in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. And for this young man and the call on his life and, and all that's in his spirit and all that he dreams and desires in his heart for you, thank you, Father, that you are bringing him into a new place, a new, a new understanding, a new revelation, a new strength. That even as he's built up his physical strength, you're building up his, his spiritual strength. And out of the pains and the disappointments that have already happened, you're bringing something new, life from the dead, resurrection into this, Father, as we just admit our need of you in Jesus' name. And Lord, for the, the best that is yet to come, for the, the latter that is greater than the past, uh, on this whole family, Lord, we just thank you today that, 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 that humbly before you we come to set ourselves under you for your inpouring and for your outpouring, to go all the way through Davis and his whole family in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, and not just in this country either, but all the way to his extended family, way across the ocean, doing the miracles that so need to be done and completing what's already begun. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And for stories that have seemed to start and and, and get interrupted. Thank you, Father, that, that, that the bigger picture, the bigger story has not been interrupted and is not, is not in conflict, but, but your hand is still writing yeah. and your voice is still speaking. The word is still being made flesh. So for Alice in this need and what she can't figure out, what she can't make happen herself, we just bring it under your mighty hand right now, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For every need, for every challenge every hurt of the past every everything that has been taken away um, emotionally and personally and uh, and in the family and in all those ways father right now thank you that you are a god of restoration as we humble ourselves before you knowing we can't fix those things that you are able to fix us and we receive that today in jesus name in jesus name for all this journey that that, that looking here, there, and, and, and everywhere sometimes for what it is that sometimes you don't even know what it is, but you know you're looking for it and you're trying to find it, but it's here in the heart of God for you. And if you just get a stability, if you just settle, if you just rest in what God is doing, then within that there is a flow that's bringing, bringing restitution to the past. It's, it's bringing restitution. It's not only... It's not only separating the past, but it's actually bringing healing into the past. It's, it's speaking into the past. It's pouring into the past to fix the gaps and the holes and the cracks and the, uh, and the fractures and the breaks that were there. We just come before you. Thank you, Father. And thank you for complete wholeness in, in, in Stuart's life and um, uh, for all that his future owes that that sometimes it just seems that it's one day blends into the other and every day is the same and, and, and there's nothing. I, I, I pray as he comes and humbles himself before you to, tonight, Father, it will give him a fresh vision for the future, a fresh expectation and a fresh hope in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And for Ruth as well, for, for, for things that, that she had hoped that have not occurred uh, and things that have occurred that were not expected, but still we're on the journey and, and, and still we're here and you're with us. Uh, thank you, Father, for the blessing on this family. Right now speak that that same power that, that into the humility of Jesus brought resurrection, which was a new experience, a new outbreak, a new burst of light and of life. I speak that and release that on Ruth and family in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. It, it's, we're going to finish because we've done as much time as I want. But in a world that's so self-centered and has trained it to be so self-centered, humility is such an important key. That's why I brought this word today. Don't, don't be afraid that you don't know everything, you don't have everything, and you can't do everything. Don't, don't try and blag it and pretend because you want to impress your peers or you want to impress your boss 
There's something amazing here that God is teaching us. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of God. What really happens with that is that he gives grace to the humble, which means that we have, you know the word grace is the Greek word charis, which is the word for charisma, which is the Greek for gift. We become gifted people when that grace breaks out in our life. If we're looking in the right place, which is humility before God, we become gifted people. We have all that we need at all times for all things because we have been charised, we have been gifted, we have been graced. And I believe that that is your portion. And I want you to walk in that grace tonight, believing, expecting, and walking into a new day. Yes? Amen. All right. Champion. Well, so that's it. We're done. You're, you're his favorite too. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about all the Rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk. And why not support The Rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others.